If you look anywhere on the internet concerned with sewing, you will see that self-drafting and thrift fl flipping seem to be taking over the sewing world. I think it's great that people are taking things and altering them to fit their bodies. And I think it's also great that people are taking up sewing. Maybe conventional patterns are kind of going out of fashion, out of style, and it seems that indie patterns seem to be taking over more and more. So I'm here today to talk about the virtues of learning how to sew from conventional patterns as I did for many years and I'm gonna be hacking together a dress using two different conventional patterns and using a little bit of self-drafting. And I'm gonna talk you through just some things about my feelings to do with learning to sew and using conventional patterns and just the difference between using patterns and self-drafting and what you can learn from patterns that you might be able to apply while you're self-drafting. As I always say to a lot of people who are kind of intimidated about learning to sew, sewing is like a jigsaw puzzle where they tell you how to put the pieces all together. And when you're sewing from a pattern, you'll get a guideline on how to set out all of the pattern pieces that you're gonna to use to make the garment. And it just makes life so much easier. Everything is numbered. There's lots of markings and stuff to help you put everything together. I call this step pattern Tetris. And after doing it a few times with some regular patterns, you realize just how much you can squeeze onto fabric, even if you don't have the recommended amount that it tells you that you need. The other reason why I like to start with patterns is because it's a great way to learn different terminology about garments, sewing and fashion and style and all of those lovely things that all go together into what gives us something to put on our bodies and wear every day and express ourselves. There are terms that you learn from sewing a pattern that you probably won't pick up if you're just self-drafting and kind of taking things from the op shop and cutting it down and just adjusting it to your size. There are some techniques that I've learned and terminology that I've learned from sewing from a pattern that I don't know if I would have learned as quickly had I not been using a pattern. I'll talk about some of the techniques next, but generally patterns give you some terminology for how to describe the different components of garments and also the different styles of things, which can help you establish things that suit your body and not, and it can also help you while you're shopping for regular off the shelf clothes, as well as thinking about op shops, thrifting, and how to put together your own garments. On the back of most regular patterns, you'll find a great deal of information. And at the very top, there is a description of the style of garment that you'll find in the pattern pieces in the, in the, in the pattern. So for the pattern, two patterns that I'm gonna be using today, let me just grab them. So for the two patterns that I'm using today, one is a McCall's and one is a Butterick pattern. And, oh, this one doesn't have a description. This one I think does. Oh, nope. Okay, these don't have a description. So let me find a pattern that actually does. So these are a couple of Vogue patterns that I just have in my stash. This one describes it as Mrs. Topps shorts and pants. Close fitting lined tops have back button closure, front flounce, separate pattern pieces are included, blah, 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 pleated shorts and pants, very, um, very loose fitting through the hip. So that's some information to tell you that if you're worried about making these pants and you're worried they're not gonna get around the bum, then not to worry because that's already a loose fitting shape. And then the other thing, this is a dress pattern, which I've kind of used little bits and pieces of over the years. Dress has fitted bodice with princess seams, back zipper, bodice self lining with boning and skirt variations. And so you can see that there are all these different sorts of styles, but each one of them has these princess seams. So you can take those features that are described on the back in the description and match them up with the line drawing or the illustration that's on the front. And that way you can get to learn about different kinds of styles. And I just find that really cool. Also, when you are going through the pattern itself, um, it will list the pattern pieces. Let me just grab it here. So another way to learn it is through like the list of the pattern pieces. So this talks about a bodice, a skirt, a ruffle, uh, yeah, and binding and stuff like that. So that's another way of finding different terminology within a pattern. And for the purpose of this dress that I'm gonna show you, that dress over there that I'm gonna show you today how I made, I'm taking the bodice and sleeves from this pattern and I'm attaching it to the skirt and the ruffle or the flounce of this pattern. 
The next thing I want to talk about is techniques and techniques, I guess, is sort of an extension of terminology. And that's basically just methods and ways of how to stitch the thing together. I haven't seen that many indie patterns, so I'm not sure if they all contain these things, but it's pretty consistent with the conventional patterns that they'll all have a glossary of terms of the different kinds of things you're gonna need to do while you're sewing the things, things that'll pop up in the instructions. And often they're highlighted in, in these patterns, they're highlighted in bold and they're all caps. And so that signals that there is a way that you can go and learn what that technique that you're gonna need to use for doing that certain kind of thing. Also within a pattern, there might be steps where it's gonna spell out exactly how to do a certain kind of thing. I learnt by accident how to do a French seam because it was just described in such simple steps in a in a pattern that I have. And then I was like, hey, wow, mom, look at this, this seam that I made, it's amazing. And she was like, yeah, that's just a French seam. She hadn't taught me that before. But ever since then, I've just been obsessed with French seams because they're so neat and tidy and lovely. Also in the pattern steps, there might be things that they get you to do that don't make sense immediately. I didn't really understand the point of stay stitching for a really long time. And then it kind of clicked for me one day when I just sort of followed the steps and the instructions. There's also the same thing with using ease stitching for curves, for a hem or for sleeve cuffs. And if you follow the steps, then the, those techniques become part of your repertoire and you'll start to implement them even when you're self-drafting and it will uh, help you make your garments look really nice and refined. And if there are some techniques that I'm talking about that you've tried to do that you're not really sure how to do, then let me know below and I'll put together and explain a video for you guys. Following a pattern will also help you learn about which kinds of fabrics work with which cuts and which kinds of garments. If you're still pretty new to sewing, then I'll say that half the battle is choosing the right fabric. The reason that fabric is really important is that it affects the fall and drape of the final garment. And if it's sewn in something that's fighting how the pattern is designed, then the garment just won't look very nice in the end. As I said before, there's so much information on the back of a pattern. And one of those things is recommended fabrics and also sometimes a warning against using certain kinds of fabrics or prints for the garment because it just won't fit or it won't work out. And the more you sew, the more you'll intuit what works and what doesn't. And that will also help you while you're shopping for off the rack stuff because you'll be able to tell like, oh, that doesn't really work or that fabric's not very durable for that kind of garment. Just, just like little, little things that will help you all throughout your life. And if you really wanna learn more about fabrics, then I have two great strategies that you can go to. The first one is to visit a fabric shop and go around and take note of the different sections and they might have a label on them and just kind of check and see and start to feel, start to look at how they drape, start to look at how they're put together and even ask some of the staff to be like, hey, I'm looking for this kind of fabric but I don't really know what it is. Can you show me what that looks like? And they will be more than willing to help you. If you've been sewing for a while, you'll eventually just be able to go up and kind of touch fabrics either in a fabric shop or on the rack in a regular clothes shop and you'll be able to feel maybe what kind of fibers that it's made up of. The other strategy is to start reading all of the labels of your clothes because every single garment has a little label on the inside. This guy here, it's usually on the left and it will tell you what kind of fabric garment is made up of. This one is made up of 100% cotton and it feels that way. And I already knew that when I picked it up. But the other thing is that if you're trying to shop sustainably, then looking at the fabric that your clothing is made from is a way to really confirm that for you. So you can see if you're buying natural fibers or not. Also, I find it very useful when I'm looking for something warm, then I'll double check the label to see if it has any wool in it. Or if I'm looking for something cool, I'll confirm that it doesn't have any polyester in it. Just those sorts of things that make a difference. Picking the right fabric for the project is so important to the overall success of the garment. I made something last year from totally the wrong fabric and it just didn't work. I might actually do a whole video on how to choose good fabric. This next thing is sort of related to fabric, but it's an extension. It's kind of like a sub genre of fabric and that's to do with grain. Grain refers to the direction of the fibers and it's particularly pertinent to woven fabrics. So there's kind of two main kinds of fabrics. There's woven fabrics and knit fabrics. I probably definitely have to do a whole video on fabric, don't I? <sighs> I'll add it to the list. So grain refers to the direction of the fabric. Basically with a woven fabric, you have a warp, which is this way and a weft, which is this way. 
And on the pattern pieces, there will be, if it's important to have the grain lining up in a certain way, there will be an arrow to say, this is the grain line and this is where you need to either fold the fabric or have the pattern piece orientated in a certain way so that you will get the right effect. Then once you know a bit about grain, you'll be able to identify garments and stuff while you're out and about and it also helped me figure out how to cut and organize all of the pieces for my denim upcycle project which you can go and watch up here and finally while there are so many indie patterns to download and print out there I feel like it might be easy to come by conventional patterns especially if you're going around thrift shops op shops or maybe you're having a look on Facebook marketplace or something because I feel like people might not be holding on to that sort of stuff anymore. I'm not really sure. Personally, I love to have a paper pattern straight away, so I don't mind going and finding a conventional pattern from Spotlight or something. I don't really like having to print out a bunch of A4 pages and stick them together and cut them out before I can even get started or going and printing it at an A0 size. I think that in my future I see a projector and maybe once I have a projector I'll be more keen on indie patterns but for now I'm pretty happy with my stash of conventional patterns. There are also probably a bunch of patterns out there that look like they're kind of old school styling or maybe a bit 80s or out of date but as with anything in fashion those things come around so if you hold on to your paper patterns long enough you'll be able to be in style once again. And I think that that's kind of what's happening to me. All of these patterns that my mom had in the 90s are now coming back into fashion. So I'm really glad that she held on to them because now I can also make those things. Also, hack between different patterns. I've talked about this in another video about pattern hacking where there are regular markings and stuff. Such a big plane kind of consistent pattern markings. It is called pattern marking so that you can actually maybe fit the sleeve of one thing to the bodice of another thing because of how those things are all sort of, there's these kind of conventions about how people do stuff and that's nice. And I don't know if indie patterns really do that because I've not made that many indie patterns. Just to wrap it up, this isn't to take a dig at self-drafting. I think self-drafting is really cool to be able to do and it's, if you're teaching yourself how to sew, then good on you. I guess what I'm trying to say is that using a pattern from the beginning, or if you're not com feeling confident about how to draft something for yourself, then there's no shame in going for a pattern. I think that indie patterns are great, conventional patterns are great, self-drafting is great, but uh, if you are really into self-draft, there still is a lot that can be learned from using a pattern. And sometimes you just end up with these really cool shapes or these complicated sleeves that unless you're a super advanced pattern maker yourself, you're probably not attempting if you're self-drafting. So I think it just unlocks another way of creating stuff for yourself to really make it individual too. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. I just know that from my own experience, if I hadn't spent as much time sewing from patterns, then the transition into self-drafting and upcycling stuff would have been a lot rockier and a lot more difficult had I not gained and consolidated the techniques that I learned from a pattern. It's all just time and experience at the end of the day. And if you find a pattern that you like, then it's worth making it a few times and a few different fabrics just to see what happens and just learn and adjust and figure out how to make alterations for yourself. I love being able to sew, it's the best. <laughs> Remember that the more you sew, the more you'll learn and the more confidence you'll have going forward to sewing and creating even more stuff. Knowing how to sew can be really great to develop and consolidate your personal sense of style because if you have an idea in your head about a garment that you want to have, it might not necessarily be available in a shop. But if you know how to sew, then you can create that for yourself and maintain that sense of personal style without being reliant on what's fashionable or trendy at the time. Finally, it's also pretty great to have someone compliment your outfit knowing full well that you made it yourself.